اهلا بكم في حلقه جديده من برنامج من هوليوود مع ميكو النهارده عندنا مقابله حصريه مع الفنان القدير جوناثان برايس عن دوره في مسلسل ذا كراون واللي هو بيمثل فيه شخصيه الامير فيليب جوز الملكه الراحله اليزابيث ملكه بريطانيا تعال نشوف جوناثان برايس او سير جوناثان برايس هيقول لنا ايه عن الدور بتاعه Crown is a symbol of permanence. Sir Jonathan, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. It's good to see you too, and it's such a pleasure to be with you in one room and talking to you. A uh, quick question. Um, let me start by saying, um, like, how did you feel about playing Prince Philip, which is kind of known to a lot of people around the world, and as well, just like kind of going through whatever happened. and preparing for this and apply it to your role? I know it's such a complex question, but you, I know you got it. It uh, encompasses everything. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so where, where, where to start? Um, I think, you know, you, you talk about playing this complex character who's known to the world. Uh, the groundwork had been laid for me to a certain extent by the two previous actors who played Philip and had told that story at that time of his life. And, um, you know, I felt fairly confident uh, going into this because I was now telling a different kind of Philip, um, mm -hmm. the more mature Philip, the more, um, yeah, sympathetic, maybe at times kinder Philip. Um, so I, I, I felt happy that I was going to be able to show that side of him. Also, because I'd, I'd grown up with him and he'd been part of my life for 70 years since the coronation in 1953, when I was six. And I'd always had this image of him as, uh, whenever I thought about it, it was uh, someone who was very much in the background, who was a follower of the Queen, three feet behind her. Um, I never heard him speak in all the years. Um, you, you rarely heard any of the royals speak. The Queen used to address the nation every Christmas. Um, and that was about it. Um, so to discover uh, these things about him that uh, that I hadn't known, that there was a, a different man behind that kind of mask and behind the closed doors, uh, to discover that he was, um, you know, far from being in the shadows, he was the man who ran the household. He was the... the CEO of the company. And yeah. he was the man who uh, insisted on protocol being followed uh, because he knew that if um, if people didn't obey the rules, that the company was going to disintegrate. Mm -hmm. And um, it was great to discover that man. I also discovered a man who was, by talking to people who knew him personally and spent time with him, uh, that he was a much more gregarious mm -hmm. character. and who liked a lot of fun, liked to make jokes, and a, a great guy to be with. You remain loyal to your husband and loyal to this family. So now that we are in the finale season, now yeah. it's, everything has been unfolding and we've seen what happened to Diana and to whatever. So tell me how would your character on the screen have a relationship with Diana and stuff like this? Was it different from the real life? Um, I, I can only speak for what you see on screen. Um, it was so, as accurate as, as it could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of it is uh, uh, the assumptions Peter Morgan made about what was said at the time. But the, the, the facts were real. The, the fact about uh, the shock that we all felt when Diana died. And the, um, I mean, I cried when I heard about it. There was this huge outpouring of grief from the public um, and the outpouring of uh, a demand that the royal family uh, behave in a way that the, the public wanted them to behave, to be more sympathetic, to offer condolences, to not hide behind protocol. Because the, um, you know, the fact that she was no longer a member of the royal family meant that she couldn't have wasn't supposed to have a, a royal funeral mm -hmm. or her body wasn't supposed to be brought back to the country on an RAF plane and all that kind of thing. But the wow. public demanded something different. 
And it was a kind of, uh, well, it was not a kind of, it was a turning point in regards to the public perception of the royal family. And um, the royal family began to be more aware of what the public might want rather than them dictating what they would be given or what they would hear. It, it was fantastic for this to happen just as well because she's the mother of the future kings. You know, like, so it was fantastic by the royal family to do so, such a thing because she won the, the, like, she won the heart of the people. And I think Diana was more effective in this. So um, I just want my last question is do you regret any choices that you made as an actor for the character? For the character? Yeah. No, maybe, maybe I should have made more right ones. I don't know, but I don't think it. Um, no, no. No, maybe the shoes could have fitted a bit better. They were a bit tight. <laughs> no. They are royal shoes, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sir, thank you so much for your time. And it was absolutely a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.